Hello everyone, uh, welcome back. Uh, so far in this course, uh, we have been looking at uh, unsupervised learning and specifically uh, we have been looking at uh, representation learning problems in unsupervised learning, right? So, representation learning. And in representation learning, we looked at uh, the PCA algorithm, which is the principal component analysis algorithm. We also looked at uh, a kernel version of it, which we called the kernel PCA. What we are going to do now is look at another paradigm of unsupervised learning, which is called as cluster. Right. So, this is what we are going to look at today and uh, this is also a popular uh, unsupervised learning problem. Okay, so what is the motivation for uh, looking at uh, clustering? Uh, let's let's take a simple picture, two-dimensional picture, and uh, let's say we have a bunch of data points which are like this. Uh, let's say some points here, some points here, and maybe some points here. Now, one thing we could do to represent this data in the way that we have seen so far is to do a PCA on this data set. And if we do a PCA on this data set, what we would get is the, the eigen direction which captures the maximum variance would be perhaps something around this direction, along this direction. And once we have found the eigen direction, what we typically do in PCA is uh, find the proxies for these data points along the eigen direction. If we do that, then we are going to get points like this. Okay, I am not be exactly drawing it, but you get the idea, right? So maybe there are more points here, here, and then their corresponding proxies would be here, here. Now the question is, have we really understood the underlying structure in the data? It is one thing to say that there is a line or a linear subspace that has most of the information that is present in the data. Uh, but then in this case, that linear subspace happens to be this, um, this green line that I have drawn here. Uh, but there is more that you can say about this, right? So it is not just the linear subspace, but then in the linear subspace, you still have some kind of information. Right. So, the data points are what I will call as clustered together. So, it is not that they are all over, all over the place in the, you know, the linear uh, subspace that you are finding in PCA, let us say, but then even within the subspace there, there is some more structure to be uncovered. The question that we will ask today is in general, if you are given a bunch of data points, how can you, you know, uncover these cluster based structure in the data? So, the goal of uh, the lecture is to understand, let us say we are given a bunch of data points as usual x1 to xn, uh, all data points we are going to assume are in our d dimension. Now, we want to partition the given data into k different clusters, k different partitions or clusters or groups, uh, we can call them however we want, but that is the goal. Right. So, we want to partition the data into k different, you know, think of these as boxes, let us say. Um, so, here is an example. Um, I mean, a simple example, let us say we just have a bunch of points x1, x2, uh, x3, x4, x5 and uh, we want to partition them into, let us say, three boxes. Now, there are multiple ways you can group these things together, right. So, maybe there is one way which groups x1, x2, x5 in, in one box, x3 in one box and x4 in one box. Maybe this is a way to partition the data into three boxes or three clusters. Here is another way, x1, x4 in this way, in this in this grouping group together, um, x2 stays separate, let us say x3, x5 group together, right. So, there are multiple ways you can partition a bunch of data points into boxes, k different boxes. Uh, in fact, in this case, if you want to argue how many ways are there to partition, you know, um, five points into three boxes, um, naively speaking, each point, you take every point and then that point has three different options, three different boxes that it can go to. And if you take the second point, that also has three different options, right. So, if you naively compute how many 
face you can put 5 points into 3 boxes there are 3 into 3 into 3 into 3 into 3 I mean each point has 3 options so there are 3 power 5 possibilities. Um, so this also of course includes possibilities which lead to you know empty boxes or empty clusters uh, but for the moment you know even if you do not want that this will still be a very large number. Right. So, uh, this is exponential in, 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 in the parameters of interest, in this case the number of data points and the uh, number of points, right? so, uh, number of uh, boxes. Um, so, this is something that we understand. So, that there are lots of possibilities of putting points into a bunch of uh, boxes. Now, we want to understand how do we, you know, what is, what is a good way to do this? That is the goal, which means that for each of these partitions, each of these ways of putting data points into boxes, we need to say, how good is that partition? We need to come up with a performance measure for a partition given a bunch of data points. So, the next goal uh, what we want to do is what is a good performance measure for partitioning data points into clusters. Towards this what we will do is we will first uh, introduce some notation. As usual our data points are x1 to xn. So, these are data points. Um, now, we are going to say every data point is associated with a cluster indicator variable which I am going to call as z. So, this is z1 to zn. So, these are cluster indicators um, where zi belongs to 1 to k meaning every data point goes to one of these boxes 1 to k right so that is the that is that is the problem right so we need to put each point in one of the boxes let's say if i put the 10th point in the fourth box then x10 is the point data point and the corresponding z10 the variable corresponding to the cluster indicator for the 10th point which is z10 will now be 4 right so now each of these values z1 to zn takes a value between 1 to k which indicates which cluster or which box the corresponding point goes into right so this is a uh, so so this is a way to define a partition if you will right so once i give you z1 to zn uh, then you know where each data point goes into right so that's what this z z1 to zn tells you and then that determines a partition so once we have this notation then um, we ask the question given a cluster assignment how good is it we want to understand how good a partition is right so i can give you some cluster assignment and then i ask you how good is this assignment now uh, you need to you know objectively measure performance of uh, goodness of a partition which means that we need to associate a number to each partition which means that if I tell you z1 to zn then you need to give me a number which says how good is this is this way of partitioning x1 to xn via z1 to Z zn how good is it right. Uh, so, let us call this as some function z1 to zn of course, depends on x1 to xn also. So, I give you the partition uh, partitioning of the data points into k clusters. Uh, I ask how good is this partition. So, now you can one way to think about this there are multiple ways you can define this function. One natural way you can you can ask is um, you somehow want partitions to be you know homogeneous in the sense that if I say that I have clustered a bunch of data points into three different clusters every cluster should somehow look alike. Now, how can we measure alike looking alike of a cluster? Well, again you can measure it in different ways. One natural way is to kind of look at how spread the data points are in this cluster. In other words, you can ask well how different are these points from the mean or the center of this of this cluster, right. So, you can measure the distance from of each point to its center and then sum it up over the set of points in the cluster and then that will give you some sense of how good is this cluster how, how homogeneous is this cluster? If the, all the points are the same, then each point will suffer zero distance to the center. If the points are like well apart, then they will suffer a larger value, right. So, we want to, you know, somehow formalize this, uh, this intuition and say that the, the, the performance measure that we will be interested in is as follows. Um, it, so, for every data point, 
you measure the distance of the data point xi to mu zi and I will tell you what mu zi is and then this is an L2 squared distance. So, what is mu zi? Well, mu zi is mean of mean mean meaning the average mean or average of z i cluster. Remember z i is a value between 1 to k right. So, it tells where which cluster x i goes to. Uh, so, how can we define mu? Mu k can be defined as follows. Mu k is just the average of all the data points which go to the kth cluster according to z1 to zn right. So, I look at z1 to zn each of these is a value between 1 to k I look at which of the which of the data points have been assigned to the kth cluster and then I compute the average for that set of points. So, in notation one way to put this would be to do the following I say I am going to sum up all data points, but then not all data points have, have been assigned to the kth cluster. So, I will multiply this with a number which is an indicator of whether the corresponding cluster to which the x i point has been assigned to is k. So, this indicator value takes 1 if this is true which means if the i th point has been assigned to the k th cluster then this is 1 otherwise this is 0. So, basically what I am doing is I am adding up all the points which have been assigned to the k th cluster and then I am dividing it by the number of points assigned to k th cluster which can be just got by summing up the indicators over all data point. This would again be one indicator of some um, u is one if u is true and zero otherwise. Which means all I am doing is it is just a notation to say that I am just looking at each box and then computing the average of that box. So, then what does this uh, performance measure compute? It computes the distance between every point to the mean of the box, uh, the, the distance square of every point to the mean of the box in which it is assigned to. Okay. So, this is the uh, this is the performance measure which we, with which we will work, work right now. Uh, just to make sure we all understand this perfectly well. So, here is an example let us say I have points x 1, um, x 2, x 3, x 4, x 5 and then uh, I have z 1 is 1, z 2 is uh, 2, z 3 is 1, z 4 is 1, z 5 is 2. In this case let us say k is 2. I want to divide the 5 points into 2 boxes and here is one way to divide that right. So, I am saying x 1 goes to the first box x2 goes to the second box, x3 goes to the third box and so on right 4 to the 1, fifth, fifth point to the second box. So, what would be mu 1? Mu 1 would be check which of the points have been assigned to box 1 in this case x1 and x3 and x4. So, this will be x1 plus x3 plus x4 divided by 3 and mu 2 would be uh, what is what are the points assigned to the second cluster x2 and x5. So, this is going to be x2 plus x 5 divided by 2. So, this is this is basically an example of whatever we are saying here. Uh, so, uh, the goodness of this partition itself would be x 1 minus mu 1 squared plus x 2 minus mu 2 squared because 2 is assigned to partition 2 x 3 minus mu 1 squared plus x 4 minus mu 1 squared plus x 5 minus mu 2 squared and so on. Right. So, that is that is the that is the way we are defining uh, partitions and so now we have put down a specific measure or a metric to measure goodness of a partition. So, what would be our uh, precise goal? Our goal is now to minimize over all possible partitions the measure that we just put down which is sum over i equals 1 to n x i minus mu z i squared. So, this is our goal. <coughs> So, one naive way to find out uh, this is to go over all possible partitions and then see you know which one gives us the least value right. And we know that there are there are uh, only a finite number of partitions. Uh, so, we could potentially imagine an algorithm where we will go over each partition and measure this and then pick the one that has the smallest value. But what might be a problem with that algorithm? If you want to pause and think uh, let me tell you the problem with that algorithm now. The problem is there are too many partitions. There are too many possibilities to do this naive um, algorithm. 
uh, in fact uh, the naive thing would be it will be k power n right so each data point has k possibilities if there if there are k clusters and there are n points so there are potentially k power n ways to divide put points into boxes again this is an upper bound because this also takes into account empty boxes but then uh, still uh, your actual value will not be too it will also grow exponentially um, and that's a problem right so uh, computer scientists would say that this is an np hard problem uh, in other words it is not expected that we will we are going to get an algorithm to solve this uh, whose run time the amount of time it takes to run uh, is is polynomial in the uh, parameters of interest which is n and uh, k in this case maybe if there was something like uh, n n squared into k power 3 that was your you know the amount of time the, if you came up with an algorithm then that's a good algorithm because it runs polynomial in n and polynomial in k but then right now we are saying the naive algorithm is going to take k power n uh, where you look at you go over all possible partitions and that's a big no no right so we simply cannot run this algorithm imagine even if k is 2 and n is if you have 1000 data points then this is saying the number of possible ways uh, grows something like 2 power 1000 and that's that's like an astronomically large number to deal with right so and we don't want to do that so then what can we do right so if this is our goal then how can we achieve this goal um, we won't necessarily be able to achieve this goal exactly but what we will do is we'll come up with a very popular heuristic algorithm to kind of solve this problem and we'll see what this algorithm next